It's part of everyday vocabulary. It summons imagery of fire and brimstone, of wailing and gnashing of teeth. But is there really a hell? In a moment, meet the maker of Hellbound, a film that singes a few theological feathers in pursuit of eternal answers. What if those Christians are all right? No? You never worry about that? No, never, never worry about that. Then best-selling author of The Shack, Paul Young, tells us why his next novel wrestles over eternal separation from God. This is Context. Today we look way beyond the headlines. Well, our first guest is the writer and director of a new documentary entitled Hellbound, which poses the question, does hell exist? Who goes there and why? Kevin Miller joins us now from Saskatoon. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Lorna. Hey, Kevin. It is a very thought-provoking documentary with many interviews, many locations. Why did you want to get us talking about hell? <laughs> well, you know, it actually started out as quite a personal project for me. I hadn't really... You know, thought through. You know the. You know how political this this topic could really be. But it it really began back in the fall of 2008. I edited a book on this topic, and I, I'm a Christian. And I, uh, you know, have um, of course when I came to faith when I was nine years old, hell was part of the picture, and it's something I think that's always been percolating underneath my faith. And I edited a book for a guy named Brad Jersak called Her Gates Will Never Be Shut that opened me up to this really interesting historical conversation about the doctrine. Um, you know, looking at all the different terms in the Bible that are typically translated as hell and looking at the various interpretive traditions. So I found this so fascinating. I really just wanted to make a film that would share some of this information. And it just so happened that um, as I began working on developing the film in uh, early 2011, suddenly it became a very hot issue in the United States with the publication of Rob Bell's book, Love Wins. So it showed me that the time to have this debate or discussion is, is now. And so the, the timing of the film couldn't have been better. <laughs> well, I, I felt you were a universalist, that everybody wins at the end. What the film says and what I believe are two very different things. And I think what we're ultimately arguing for in the film is not a specific position as it is really a way of holding beliefs and that, you know, really no matter what you believe about hell, I think the most important thing is what kind of a person does your theology lead you to become? What kind of a civilization do we build based on our theology? Because we're always building our world based on these ultimate beliefs or worldviews. And so what we're really calling the audience to in the end of the film is to, um, I, I think at the most we're calling them to is an openness, to at least consider because, um, you know, at various times in history, certain doctrines do become a litmus test and a way of trying to define the, the, bram the parameters of the group. And, and how do we develop an identity? I think the question is, how do we develop a strong identity without being so exclusive that um, we become like thought police when people start to maybe suggest other ideas that we don't just um, scapegoat them and expel them from the group? Is this really a movie about making, helping us think also about what choice am I making about God? Well, definitely. I think what the, the argument that Robert McKee makes, and McKee is, is very famous for being a teacher of screenwriters um, throughout the world, and the argument he makes is that um, without hell, um, there's no consequence for the choices we make, and that choices are, are what give life meaning. So if you take away hell, life loses meaning and so really I think we spend a lot of the film trying to respond to that argument. The clip you play of, uh, of Mr. McKee is he says as an atheist he says the notion that there really isn't hell is simply a wussy effort by certain people to make God a nice guy because they can't deal with the dichotomy that God is both protector and punisher. How did that affect you when you first heard it? You know I take it really seriously. Um, and I think that anybody that is questioning the idea of eternal torment should ask, is this something that's just motivated by an inability to face up to the harsh realities of life? There, there are many ways to look at this. And I think one of the problems is that we find when people question our view, rather than actually consider the argument that they're making, we impugn their character. And we say, well, it's a weakness of character that causes you to have that view, as opposed to actually listening to you know, why they might be articulating that view. So again, in Hellbound, we're, we're trying to move people past an emotional knee-jerk reaction to competing ideologies and, and really um, promote um, listening and reasoning together because we're all subjective beings. None of us has a corner on the truth. And so I think that there's, there's a great benefit to having many people, you know, give us counsel. Kevin Miller, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Lorna. And now it's time to find out what you think. 
Do you believe in a literal hell? Yes or no? Send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter, and uh, you can be part of that conversation while our studio audience is taking a live vote, and we'll have those results in a moment. Coming up, when it comes to beliefs about hell, Christianity is quite divided. We'll take a deeper look at the different views when we return.